First Arkansas game is in the books. There's no Nick Smith Jr. Arkansas looks crazy long. And they defeat the North Dakota State Bison by a score of 76 to 58. This is Arkansas Basketball Recap. I'm Daniel Price. That's Jacob Price. We're going to break it all down. And I remember something that uh, I heard Must say once, which is every game starts off zero to zero. You don't play a team that you're better than, and they don't just give you a 20 point lead because you're better than you have to accumulate it, which is why a lot of games are close in the beginning is that it takes a while to build it. Uh, and usually this happens in the second half. This happens in football games all the time where a game is like, ooh, this team, this team is kind of close to halftime in the second half. It's not close. Uh, and uh, you saw some of that in this game where you're, you, I don't know about you, but early on, like from the beginning, you're like, ooh, we might just wrap this team. And then they settled down, you know, the, New York Dakota State settled down and they, they were stopped turning the ball over as much. And I think it, that the length of Arkansas bothered them at first. And, they settled in and then made a game of it for a little while in the, in the first half. And yet I never felt like there was like really that big a chance that Arkansas doesn't pull this game out and win uh, because it was so obvious that Arkansas was so that now, by the way, I don't think that the Bison are a bad team. It didn't, they didn't look like a bad team. And the way that the announcers were talking about them, they, they, under that coach, they've never finished worse than third in their conference. I mean, they're, they're I think that's a solid team, and they got some good players. They have two players in particular that look like those big men are going to be a problem for a lot of people yeah. in their league. Yeah, they were they were decent. Um, Arca, this I I don't know about you. When I was watching this game, this was my biggest takeaway, and may and and this is this is going to be partially due to the fact I think I haven't seen enough to know, but I think because Nick Smith didn't play there was, this was more one-on-one basketball than I have ever seen in an Arkansas Razorback game. And you can see that by how few assists there were. Now don't confuse that with saying that these are like, that these are selfish basketball players. I don't think they are. It's not that they didn't pass the ball around. They did. But when it came time to score, it was, I'm just going to take you and go to the book. So they'd move it around. They were looking for something wasn't like weren't finding it uh whatever whatever it was it like wasn't there and then a dude just had to take another dude and they won that battle most of the time which on one hand you're like well i'd like to see like a more fluid offense where you're getting easy buckets off of you know passes you know you're getting shots off passes you're getting posts up or guys cutting to the basket and getting layups off passes whatever it is as opposed to you just Spread it out, dude. I'm a, I'm more athletic than this guy. I'm about just going to take him off the bounce and just go to the bucket. the The bright side about that is one, you didn't have your you didn't have Nick Smith, who's your best playmaking player. And two, in past our Muslim teams, we in our recent Razorback history, we actually didn't have enough guys that could do that. And now you're like, I got a lot of guys that can do that, so that's good, right? I mean, there's there's a lot of dudes on this roster. If you're down one or it's tied and there's 15 seconds left, there's been times in the past where you're like, who's going to take the shot? How, we just need someone that can go get one. There's a lot of dudes on this on this on this team that will at least get to the bucket and get something up, and that's a good thing. And so I think, and I think the rest of it they'll figure it out. I think you saw um, the freshmen struggle a little bit, and that's expected, dude. Like I think they look way different. 10 games into the season, they do that. Like Anthony Black, who I thought played pretty well, you could tell. Like it's his, it's the first game, man. There's 19,000 people in there. Like it's it's the first it's the first time. Uh Jordan he, Walsh. He try, he he tries passes that uh you can make in high school, but they don't go over against you know division one athletes. Like, yeah, dude. And then and, and Jordan Walsh, you're like, yo, I don't know how you foul out in 18 minutes, but like you can't do that. Uh, so don't do that. And it, but but it was all it was all fine because you expect some of that. I think Nick Smith probably would have been a little more composed. Uh, he just is that guy, I think. And so what you saw, I thought, was Devo Davis, Trevon Brazil, Ricky Council. Those are all dudes who have played college basketball before, and they and they picked it up. 
you know, they shouldered it. And I think that there's going to be some of that early on while the young guys figure it out and you're going to have to be patient. And so I thought overall, well, I thought parts of the game were really weird. It's just, I think it's just a weird team to watch. I like it. I bet I have to, I'm going to have to get used to it and figure There's some figuring out that has to happen just for my eyeballs. But overall, I thought pretty good. I thought, well, I thought it was pretty good. We, I mean, a lot of this stuff gets redundant because, you know, we talk about must like I would be, if it wasn't for the fact that, you know, must always kind of has teams that he is figuring out how they, because I mean, there's just, he, there's no way that he can, sometimes you can tell he even wants the team to be a certain thing, but then after a few games of live action, he realizes this is not going to work. Got to scrap that plan or at least greatly alter that plan. And Mus, we've always talked about this, he makes the best of all his ingredients, which is very awesome with him just being able to recruit the best players and make the best thing out of it. But it is a little bit frustrating when, and, and this has happened every year, where you can't put your finger on, they're not running anything particular. Like he doesn't have a particular offense that they run to a precision and you're watching it and you're like, you see what's happening. It's a lot of, he does a very fluid he tries to, I mean, it's not completely sporadic, but he tries to let his athletes be free and get the best out of their athleticism. It's a lot, a lot of, a lot of dribble drive handoffs, that kind of stuff, just trying to get the ball moving around and then finding a, finding a hole. Yeah. But in early on in the year before those guys even uh, are, have figured out what they're best at and he's figured out where to put them in the best positions. You know, it, it definitely looked like a lot of, street ball i mean i've played against guys like that where you have a team and like your team is older more disciplined good defenders they're gonna hit open threes and stuff like that and you play a bunch against a bunch of young guys and you're playing way better basketball than them but they're still beating you because you just can't stop them because they're so much more young and athletic than you and that's kind of how it felt which yeah must must improves uh, his team so much through the season. If if it, if he wasn't that kind of coach, I actually would be worried about. There's lots of things to worry about from last night. Um, the three point shooting again. What are you talking about? Like, we shot forty percent. I know, but you could four, just tell four out, of ten, four out of ten, baby. You could tell though that those guys don't want to shoot that, the three that much. That, not really. You know what I mean? Like, they, and and they weren't even working the ball. It wasn't just that they were because sometimes you can. I mean, you can you know, you can not make a good percentage, but get good looks. And they got a couple of good looks, which they made, but they didn't, they weren't even, the, the three ball is so important and so imperative to the game these days that, I mean, basically most offenses now revolve around penetrating and trying to swing the ball to three point shooters. If not to get the three, then to, make the people dive at the three because you've got shooters out there and then you get better drives and better kickouts. Do, do you feel and, like, let me, let me, let me ask you this. Cause I, that, I mean, that's obviously was, that was an obvious thing. We didn't attempt a three for the first 10 minutes of the game. Now, look, I'm not a live and die by the three kind of guy. I Sometimes the, the amount of three balls that a team shoots is preposterous to me. Uh, it's it's ridiculous like the, the amount of threes that go so i'm not far be it from me to say like you got to shoot 25 30 threes a game or some crazy i i don't like that like it's not i don't i don't think you end up in the nba i, I would say you don't end up winning championships the way the, the golden state warriors do but i don't think college basketball teams do uh it's because it's a live by die by especially that's true in college basketball and those teams usually die by it eventually in the tournament so I don't want to live and die by three balls at all. Like, but if you don't shoot a three in 2022 for the equivalent of the first quarter, so like the first 10 minutes of the game, my daughter plays on a freshman basketball. There's zero chance that they don't shoot five threes in the first quarter of any game they play no chance whatsoever that's that is going to happen for sure the, well, the, the, the lack even, of attempts the shooting the, the, the lack of attempts the, was crazy it's the it's that it softens the offense i mean, I mean the defense yeah if you're not going to shoot threes 
dude, I mean, oh, I love it. When, I, when I'm when i playing basketball and I look across at a team and they don't have a freaking deadly shooter that we've got to, like, worry about. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, oh, dude, I'm going to play so good help defense. I'm mm -hmm. leaving this guy in the corner and I'm coming over and clogging up the paint. And it's basically not shooting a three, not attempting one, and not proving that you have guys that can make them is the equivalent of, in, like, uh, football, not running – any, not running the ball at all in the first quarter, like just dropping back to pass or not dropping back to pass and only running the football. It's like you have to do one of them 20% of the time to make the defense honest. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like you can't I, just so have I them wonder, all sagging. Yeah, so I wonder. So first of all, yeah, I, we do have to acknowledge that we did shoot 40% from the three-point line. We we took 10. We made four. So Didn't that's Brazil nice. Brazil make – Three. Did he make all four or made three? He made three, yeah. Uh, Ricky Council made one as well. But the uh, – so you have that. I do think that's another area where not having Nick Smith hurt. Yeah. Like, you're going to shoot more threes. Shot, he would have shot more. You're going to shoot more threes when you have Nick Smith on the court. That's going to happen. You might even get more threes with Nick Smith on the court because I think Nick Smith is – those guys can all collapse the defense. Don't get me wrong. But Nick Smith – those guys aren't guards. You know, like well, Nick Smith is yeah, a I was guard. Say, Brazil, Brazil and Council, they were able to get to the rim in spite of the fact that those guys were mm -hmm. playing a little bit off of them, but they were just so much longer and faster. But they never, I don't know if they ever once passed off of a drive, which Nick Smith would do more. You know what I mean? Yes, like he, he would. would be, he would be driving to kick and that would give you some swings to get to some open looks. Yeah. So uh, I think, whereas I think... those guys, and they didn't necessarily need to, I mean, actually Council, who played amazing, but like he could have had another, he probably left eight points where he got all the way to the rim. And it was like, it was actually, he's, it was too much finesse. He was like, he's like, just, just lay it right off the backboard. And instead he'd do some kind of fancy English with his wrist and it would like spin out of the rim. You know what I mean? But he missed like half a dozen little bunnies that he got all the, did all the hard work and just missed the. Well, Bla Anthony Black did that. It was like, Anthony Black was getting doing such a good job of getting to the basket and just wasn't going in. I've felt for I've been in that spot before where you're like all everything's right but the finish. But yeah, so I think not having Nick Smith, uh, I think that changes things. You know, I think it makes it hard to evaluate because we don't know what they'll look like with with him. Um, well, and I, I also say... I also think they put I think he even put Pinion in when he first put Pinion in. I was like he is putting him in right now. To just say like, can I go get? Can I get a three? Like, can I just get one? Like, can I get one? Like, that's like that's what he was putting him in. I mean, I like Joseph Pinion, and I think he's going to be a good player for us down the road. But I do think he was just like, man, we ain't good. we got no one that's going to shoot this ball. Like, at least at least maybe we can get Joseph Pinion, and you could tell that North Dakota State knew it and was like, nope, because they. I was watching as Pinion was in there, and he was only in there for a little bit, but and he's out there in the perimeter, and they were trying to run something for him. And whoever that defender was knew the scouting report or whatever. And was like, I mean, they had a guy drive and, and he was trying to, he was in the corner and they drove and I saw the drive and he was trying to suck that defender. And he looked and that defender was like, dude, I am not moving. And it just, it just wasn't there. And so, yeah, I think you had some of that stuff too. And and I don't, you know, obviously Nick Smith's the kind of guy that's going to go, can go get his own shot too. Uh, so I think there was some of that. I think Musk tried to be like, oh, maybe Pinion can get in there and shoot some. He didn't even shoot the ball, you know, so that didn't work. But yeah, Nick Smith would have made a difference on that. But that being said, I mean, they, they, I thought they still played really well. Um, for it's, I'm glad we're going to have a couple of games against teams that are probably inferior athletically to uh, – You're going to have one allow more game. Us, and then, and then is it, isn't it two and then the tournament? Oh, maybe it's two and then Maui. I don't know. I, thought, I thought it was two and then my, but I might be wrong about that, but it is. We're going to need... yeah. So we're going to have Fordham and then we have uh, South Dakota state. South Dakota state was good last year and they've been good for a long time. Uh, and then, yeah, then you're going to well, get Louisville. Yeah. Because that, I mean, I don't know when Nick Smith will be back and that could change everything, but because, because it wasn't just threes either. They weren't even getting like pat ball movement, jump shots. You know what I mean? Like they were, it was mostly one-on-one -on -one basketball and that's not going to work against, comparable like sec athletes you know what i mean it, it'll work a little bit but you're not gonna win you're not it'll gonna work, win a game it'll work possession to possession but it, but but, but that's also the reason why you end up shooting 
I mean, Arkansas was 28 to 57. They shot 49% for the game. I mean, obviously you're like, well, I'll take that all every, I mean, for the game, you shoot 49% as a team. Like that's crazy. But it's, dude, they're just like, they were like, we're the vast majority of our shots we're going to take can be right at the rim, man. And I'll give well, them, but like that's I what I'm saying. They're not going to be right at the rim when we're playing council and as good as they are, and they're going to get a lot of high flying dunks. There's going to be a lot of highlight reels with, with Brazil and those guys. And they are going to get, they're going to get some of those. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying they're not going to get 25 points of driving to the rim layups one on one against guys that are Man, slightly do, do bigger, those, slightly do those better. Dudes... So, yeah, let's get let's get into some of the player breakdowns here. Um, it seems to me, first of all, Ricky Council and Trevon Brazil and, and Anthony Black too, uh, but particularly in this game, Ricky Council. And Trevon Brazil, I mean, dude, you know about some long athletic dudes, but damn. Dude, those back-to-back -back drive and dunks, it was like the exact same play, but the council went reverse. That reverse flew right by their guy. That reverse is what do you do about dude? That was ridiculous. Like, what do you do? From the side, his head was like behind the backboard. What do you do about that? There's nothing you can do about that. Like, that's and, and I I'm watching those two guys and and black too, because black didn't finish a lot of it, but he was dude and he would go to the bucket and you're just like how are you guys not going to live at the free throw line like i would i have to assume and i'm sure and must loves free throws attempted we know this i have to assume these dudes are going to like what a nightmare to have those like three guys like that coming at you all the time how are you not just fouling all over the place and like i mean ricky council uh I mean, I, I mean, you saw Trevon Brazil and you knew, he's, and I knew, I knew Ricky Council was athletic too, like crazy. But I, in this game, dude, he finished some stuff that was crazy, dude. Like not, not just that dump, but he, he had other finishes that were just like, that's ridiculous, man. Like, like, uh, well, yeah, those first, first, I mean, those two guys saved, I mean, completely saved the day. I mean, what, what did they each have? Uh, uh, Council had 22, uh, Brazil had 21. Yeah. I mean, that's crazy for your first game. And... Yeah, Devo Devo had eighteen. I, I, I so we get. I'll say this. So I'm gonna get. I'm gonna talk about some of the individual players. I will say. Uh, so player of the game. Uh, I think that you have three guys in contention. You have Brazil, Council, Davis. Uh, Davis had. We had eleven turnovers for the game as a team, which isn't terrible. I know they wanted nine. Uh, they were, but. Davis had five of them and no assists. So I can't give you player of the game. If you had like half the team's turnovers and no assists, sorry, Devo, even though I liked the way you played and I know you didn't want to play point guard probably the whole game and you were wondering where Nick Smith was. And, but so I liked what he did. Uh, he devoted up a couple of times. Like that, the most Devo thing I've ever seen anyone do is like, Oh, this ball's going out of bounds. I'll chuck it 94 feet the other direction. I get what you're doing. You don't want to inbound it. It has some dude get like a dunk. So uh, but just a crazy thing to do. Like I've never seen anyone do it. Just like I'll grab that and just throw it all the way the length of the, just chuck it out of here. I think he was thinking maybe if I throw this way back there and it's just a foot race, one of these athletes will go, you know, yeah, die. No, it's a good move. It's just most, everybody. It's the most Devo y thing I've ever seen. And he had a couple of times where he tried just tried to do too much because he's Devo and, and yet you, you take it because that's how he is. But anyway, too many turnovers. Uh, and then you have, you know, you have Trevon Brazil who played amazing. You have Ricky Council that played amazing. For me, for even though Trevon Brazil had 21 points and and 12 rebounds, um, so they had that double double. For me, the player of the game I would say is Ricky Council because of the times that he scored, like at the especially early in the game, uh, where. It doesn't. It didn't feel like the game was in jeopardy or whatever. But he came out and like and established some stuff. And I felt like he also just he just, his shots were difficult. And even though you know Brazil made three threes and we needed those, um, I was just I the player I was most impressed with in the game was Ricky Council. I was mo I was the person I was most impressed with. I was like I was like dang his man. defense was really good. He had a couple of. He, like, he just took the ball from the guy that he was guarding. Mm -hmm. uh, I would say, I would say, I mean, I'd give it to both of them. I mean, it's so mm -hmm. close because I mean, 
I would say Council because his defense was great, but Brazil's defense was good too. And like you said, I mean, they both rebounded well. And, and dude, I mean, Anthony Black's defense, you know, Anthony Black only had three points. You know, he's one of seven. He couldn't finish very well. Uh, he did have seven rebounds, three assists, three steals, one block. Uh, but when he, as a perimeter defender, what a nightmare because he was making you pick up your dribble and you got this freaking crazy long dude all over you. I think, I think uh, Anthony Black is, I don't know if he cares a ton about scoring a ton of points or whatever. He's going to have games where he does, but I think he's just got to, I think that Anthony Black is going to be an elite perimeter defender, just an absolute nightmare on defense. Yeah. Um, I, I, I think we're going to, I'm going to be interested to see, uh, because one 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 big hole that uh, it'll be interesting to see how Musk is able to fill it. I think it's. I mean, we all we've talked about it since last year, but I actually last night was looking at it and thinking it's actually you can't calculate exactly how important and how helpful it is if you have a talented big man that's super smart on defense. They bother so much of the dribble drives and those passes and everything about, an offense ta- is trying you, to do. Are you talking about Jalen Williams? Yes. I'm like the difference between when he steps in there and takes those charges from those guards that get around their man versus you know, and then and they're not even even if they are able to hand it off and the guy gets a layup, it's where they wave it off because the guy chart he makes the guy charge. He is so smart and we're just not gonna have that this year. No, and Brazil. These guys are going to go up and try to swat it out of the air, right? Yeah, or foul because they're just not in the perfect position. Dude, it's hard to play down there and not foul out. There's just mm-hmm. a lot going on down there. You know what I mean? And it's just that you you just can't calculate how much a smart defender down there and offense too. Like he was our best passer uh, in, in in offense. When you're talking about like, okay, this is too much one on one. Let's get the ball to somebody who's going to back down and then make a good pass, you know, collapse. like there's another way to collapse defense besides dribble drives and it's through the post. And uh, we're just, we just doesn't, I mean, maybe somebody will pop up, but like uh, the guys that we have right now, I don't think, and it's not, that, not taking anything away from him. Jalen was special. You know what I mean? Uh, but you, we, there might've been more there than we even realized as far as how much when you're struggling, they would, get the ball to mm-hmm. him at the high post, get the ball to him at the, you know, at the top of the key and let him, he can see over everybody. He can hold the ball high. It, <clears throat> it just looked like it was one less thing you could go to, to try to calm everything down and get a good, you know what I mean? Like we're doing too much one-on-one, too much scrambling. Let's calm down in the half court. Uh, when teams are going to try to force us into half court, you know, slow down play, he was, it was such a blessing to have a guy like that, that you could go through, even though it's not exactly what you wanted to do. Even last year, they were, <clears throat> excuse me, wanting to do more free flow. But if a team forced you into half court, having him there, like, we're going to have to figure that out. And like I said, maybe that'll all change with. Yeah. Some, someone can certainly emerge. Uh, Anthony Black might be that guy. He's so long and, and big. He might be a guy that runs up to the high post and he's a good passer and he's got good vision. And maybe, maybe he's doing that kind of stuff where he's running a, a high post, you know, from the, you know, he's running that pass, running the offense from a high post spot with, you know, Nick Smith at the other guard. Um, and I'm interested to what you thought about it. So the starting lineup, you know, so you had Devo in there and obviously you don't have Nick Smith. So you have Devo council, black Kamani Johnson and Makai Mitchell. So Brazil doesn't start, uh, but then Makai Mitchell plays 20 minutes. So he played half the game. Uh, Kamani Johnson plays 10 minutes total but trevor on brazil plays 32 minutes and jordan walsh comes off the bench and plays 18 minutes and fouls out uh that barry dunning jr played nine minutes um it but you know he, he still he still didn't go i mean he a lot of guys played i mean he played 10 guys but you know pinion played three minutes ford played three minutes you know barry dunning jr played nine minutes uh you saw some of that little tight rotation jalen graham doesn't play at all uh, which was weird. Uh, actually, in the if you look at the press conference, I don't know what this means. You can take what you want from this. Someone asked, uh, is Jalen Graham healthy? 
and must have said, oh, he's super healthy. Must be an internal thing or something. <laughs> I know, that's a weird response, right? Just like, oh, he's healthy. I like, just want you to know how healthy he is. Uh, all right. Uh, that That's weird. That sounds uh, like maybe it's some kind of small disciplinary thing or yeah. something. I don't know. Uh, so, yeah, this. So it seems to me like going forward, like. I actually liked the way now I need Makai Mitchell to rebound a little better. Uh, he had four rebounds in 20 minutes. It's not terrible. And I know we got a lot of guys just flying around, grab snatching boards and stuff. So I, 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 we didn't get out rebounded. We we won the rebounding battle, but um, I liked his back to the basket. He's that kind of the only back to the basket dude that was making like typical post moves. And I liked it. I thought it was good. Um, so I, I liked the way he looked. Uh, it seems to me just one game in that if you're going in there to try to win a game against, you know, Louisville or whatever, that your best lineup is probably Makai Mitchell, which I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have thought early on is Makai Mitchell at the five and Trevon Brazil at the four and Ricky council at the three and then Anthony black and, Nick Smith at the guards. And I don't say that because I mean, Devo played really well and at 18 points. I, I like Devo off the bench though, still. Mm -hmm. Um, And I think, so I think you're bringing Devo and Kamani and, and, and Walsh off the bench. And that's, and that's probably the bulk of your, and who knows what happens with Jalen Graham. Like, you know, Jalen Graham's a good ball player. So he he might be in there too, but um, yeah, but they're rich at that spot. I, I do think the center position is going to be, a little bit of a, I mean, it's not going to be terrible. It's not like we're not going to have any play down there, but it's going to be one of our weak spots. I'll bet if you look at the, well, Trevon Brazil is going to play and Trevon Brazil is going to play some, some five. He'll be in there to, like when they're doing different line. He did this game too. And he can do that. That's fine. But, um, well, I mean, I think when they get, when they come up against and you know, who knows how many of these there are, because there's less and less these days, but if they come up against a team that has more of a, a, a really good footwork having prototypical center. That's just a big seven foot, you know, or six foot 10 guy that has that soft hands and nice footwork. They're going to struggle to throw bodies at like, cause none of those guys are elite defenders mm-hmm. and they're going to, I mean, thankfully they've got at least three big bodies that can throw fouls at somebody like that. But also none of those guys are super talented offensive. They're, you know what I mean? Like they're, they're, they're decent, but we don't have, I don't think we're going to get a ton of points out of that position unless the other team also doesn't have a great, doesn't have great big men. Yeah. I think we're going to struggle against teams that have really good big men, both defending them and scoring on them. Cause we just don't, ours are, our, our middle is okay. Yeah. I mean, Trevon Brazil is obviously extremely offensively talented, but it's not your typical big man kind of, no, he kind scores of like a forward though. Like, I mean, he's not going to score like a center, you know what I mean? No. He's going to score going downhill. Mostly, and he, I think. And he, he got the ball in the post a couple of times and like did like kind of turn around, like, you know, one handed stuff. Like he's got finesse and stuff, but I'm talking about it. None of those, you don't have like an offensively skilled banger. Like that, that's, you don't, you don't have that guy. You're but, not you going to post we, Brazil up against, an actual big man he's not going to move a big man he's yeah. going to try to catch the ball 10 feet from the basket and go around a big man because he's well you take faster. like kentucky for example so you have like an oscar shibway like now brazil's probably not going to like be like wanting to post up a whole bunch on oscar shibway who weighs like you know 250 pounds and is all muscle and, and it, but then again i don't think oscar shibway wants to try to guard brazil on the perimeter and get his doors blown off and get his face yeah, dunked on I mean. like that. So it's a give and take, obviously. Um, so yeah, which, which by the way, the strength of this team is, and I think you saw that. I mean, this, you can see it, dude, if you've ever played any basketball, you just look at it and you're like, there's, there'll be some of those deficiencies because there's always is something, but just looking at the team again, without Nick Smith, which does change stuff, but you just look at him and you're like, that's a matchup nightmare. I don't like. I don't know how you match up with it. Like, you, like you, you, Musk can put a roster out out there that is an absolute nightmare. Yeah, defensive to, for the, another team to try to match up with those bodies is silly. Um, I will say, overall, like, I mean, because I'm just sort of cynical. I I definitely am less. I'm I'm more 
concerned than I was after the European tournament, which I was like, oh, these guys, these got athletes for days. You know, our centers looked better against those smaller, you know, whiter European (laughs) big men that were like 35 years old and like six, eight or something like that. Uh, But um, I definitely think this team is going to lose some, like, because, because after the European thing, I was like, dude, give Moss another couple, another month of getting these guys on, you know, with the program. And of course, Smith was playing and it was like, are we going to lose a game? Are we going to be the best team ever? These are the craziest athletes I've ever seen. But looking at them play in, against more fundamentally sound or, or whatever, they, I can see they're going to lose some games. Uh, um, or I mean, maybe not, but I can see where they could struggle. I can see where some holes are. Oh, yeah. And I am worried about injuries. These guys, one thing about the guys that jump like that, dude, I mean, I've never hurt my ankle in my whole life because I only got that far off the ground. You can't twist your ankle. Yeah. There's not much impact when you just come down this far. You know what I mean? When you're dropping from the rafters, like every time, I mean, and those guys ended up in the cameras like, a dozen times last night i'm like yeah. and there are little, little legs and little arms like they're not big dudes so uh i'm very concerned about them staying healthy all year because i mean i don't know how they're not going to roll an ankle at some point when they're off the ground all the time you you mean you mean like uh anthony black did like uh trevor on brazil all did. Of them did. they all for a second i was like oh my god there was that one time where uh he didn't really even notice it because he, he like the ball got kicked away and then he jumped for it. And a guy jumped on his arm. Um, that wasn't Brazil. The was, council? Uh, that was council and council was like rolling on the floor and the ball went the other way. And then Brazil ended up on the floor on the other side. And I was like, if both of those guys are, if like his arms broke and his legs broke, it's over. You know what I mean? But so we are, but luckily they do have a lot of guys that can step in, but I do hope they can stay healthy because Hmm. those guys do scare me. I I do think this. I think that if you look back at last season, um, I think this, I don't think that this team, I don't think we'll have some of the same, we may have similar conversations, but I think that the early games for this team are going to look better than some of the early games did for the team last year. And I, and the reason I say that, is because of the thing that I said was weird at the beginning, which is there were times last year before you kind of figured some stuff out and just realized that Note had to have his ball, the ball in his hands at all times before you like realized that that's how it had to be. That you were like, can anyone just go like, if you got to, can anyone just go get a shot on goal? Just like, just go get fouled or just, you know, get to the freezing line or just get a shot up, man. Like, that's not Note step back 30 feet. Like, can we, is there, can we, and you got a bucket load of dudes that can do that. And I just think that's going to help. Like, it's going to help until you get, like, and, it's, and this is how it's going to be with all these new guys that are learning how to play together. Must is always going to get better. And while in that process of getting to that point, I just think that like there's some games like that you don't lose that you did lose last time like close game the Vanderbilt game or whatever that you don't lose because you're gonna be like I got guys that can at least go just like go do something like just go get foul go get a shot at the a good shot at the at the rim whatever uh, I do think that will alleviate some of those growing pains because that's a good that's a good thing to have while you're figuring it out. Mm-hmm. Where you just like space it out, dude, and be like, I don't know, space it out, get counsel the ball, just let him see if he can just take that dude. And and most dudes, like, I mean, not every dude, but like, you know, a lot of a lot of the lot of percentage of the time, he's gonna be able to take that dude and, they, and do something, you know, or Brazil or whoever it is. It is exciting that the 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 two guys that are the most um, exciting right now on the team are two guys that aren't even in the group of guys that you were, mm-hmm. you know, boasting about at in during the, I mean, it was like, Oh, and then we've got the, we've got this guy, this guy, this guy. Oh. And then these other two guys, the transfers are not bad either, but it turns out like they're really not bad. And we haven't even really seen, 
I mean, the other guys are just freshmen, and it just seems like it's going to take them a second to yeah. get their legs underneath them. Yeah, you, know? you got to be so, patient with freshmen, dude. That, like I said, I am. Con- I, I overall, I'm not. I'm more cynical about the prospects of w- how well they're going to do during the season. I mean, I think that they, but the the room for growth, the potential is still off the charts. I mean, the potential is is still there's enough talent there to be the best team in the country. Honestly, Mm -hmm. it's just a matter of if these guys can put it together and if they can stay healthy uh, and if Musk can ring it out of them. I mean, it's on, it's not, I'm not saying it's likely even, but I'm saying that that was never on the table before you never Mm -hmm. had that opportunity. Like he got the best out of all the teams so far. And um, I mean, I'm not saying they didn't underperform once in a while, but you couldn't have expected the team that he had last year to if you do get any the, better if than you the get eight. the very best out of this team that very best is very very good yeah i agree yeah all right well let's uh let's leave it there good win starting out we did what you don't want to do is end your whatever insane opening winning streak that you have and so we didn't we didn't break that the next game is friday night and so uh we'll try to be back with something uh on friday jake i'll see you then all right